I'm going to teach you all about Profanity, a terminal-based XMPP chat client. We'll go from no experience at all to power user. This is what my customized client looks like. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know. Not only will I teach you about Profanity, but you'll also learn more about XMPP along the way. First, we'll look at why even use XMPP and why use it over IRC or Discord. Why use Profanity at all as a client. Then we'll look at installing, how to get an account, connecting, and some interface basics. Then we'll look at how to join chat rooms and bookmark them, and how to manage multiple windows. Then we'll look at adding contacts, direct messaging, and setting your presence or your status updates. We'll also look at theming, customizing your profrc file, message carbons, and resource priorities. We'll continue on with how to store your password securely, and I'll demonstrate every type of end-to-end -end encryption it supports, OTR, OMEMO, and PGP. Finally, we'll wrap up with how to send files, how to check your chat logs, and how to set up custom plugins. XMPP, previously called Jabber, is a free standard and federated protocol for messaging. It's used for chat, but it also supports voice and video chat and can be easily extended. These days, I see Discord and even IRC still used often. Unlike IRC, with XMPP, you can set a status. Your IP address isn't shown to everyone, and in general, it's extensible and has many more features, including voice and video support. Unlike Discord, with XMPP, you have many client and server options, and you can run your own server. You aren't reliant on proprietary software and one company that may change its service in the future or even shut down completely one day. You can also make XMPP bots. There are lots of libraries out there for many languages. So with all the clients out there, what makes Profanity stand out? Why do I like it? First off, it's cross-platform and it works well on all major platforms, including Android. The code is licensed for freedom with GNU GPL version 3. Their project states the goals are freedom, privacy, and choice, which are things I value too. Because of the developer's emphasis on privacy, Profanity supports three types of end-to-end -end encryption. This makes it the most flexible client. Most other clients support zero to one type of end-to-end -end encryption. With Profanity, you have all three types available. Let's look at the installation process for Profanity. For the most up-to-date instructions, visit their official website at profanity.im. Then go to the user guide, the version you want, and then to the installation guide. If you're on a Mac, you simply use Homebrew to install it in your terminal with the command brew install profanity. And if you want the integrated desktop notifications, add the option dash dash with terminal notifier. If you need Homebrew for Mac, get that from brew.sh. In Windows, the best way to use profanity is in Debian via the Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL. You can use Sigwin, but I don't recommend that route personally. To make sure WSL is enabled, open your Windows feature menu and ensure the Windows subsystem for Linux is checked on. You may need to restart if it's your first time turning it on. Then go to the Microsoft Store and search for Debian and install it. Once Debian's installed, you can launch it here from the Store page, or you can use the shortcut it placed in your Start menu. You can also press Windows key plus R to get the Run dialog and run Debian. From here, the installation process is the same as any Debian system. Be sure to run sudo apt update to make sure your repositories have the latest packages. So if you're in Debian, whether it's a native hardware install, a virtual machine, or Windows subsystem for Linux, you simply need to run sudo apt install profanity. That will be the same in Ubuntu and other Debian-based Linux distributions. This may take several minutes to install. If I run profanity-version, it looks like it's only version 0.6. If you want a newer version, you could build it from source. However, in Debian, there might be a newer version available in the Debian Backports repository. You can enable Debian Backports by running sudo apt edit sources and making sure there is a line for buster-backports. I have a line here at the bottom already. If you don't have the line already, consult the Debian wiki page regarding backports at https colon slash slash backports.debian.org slash instructions with a capital I. The name Buster will change depending on what version of Debian you have. I'm using Debian 10 Buster right now. Debian 11 will be named Bullseye. You can check your version by running cat slash etc slash os dash release. That'll include your Debian version. 
After saving your app sources file, run sudo apt update to make sure you have the most updated list of packages. Then to install, run sudo apt install profanity slash buster dash backports, telling it to explicitly pull this package from the backports repository. After it's installed, you run profanity dash dash version and you'll see it's now version 0 0.10, which is currently the latest version. Perfect. If you're in Windows using Debian on WSL, you can run it directly by pressing Windows key plus R to get the run dialog and running Debian run profanity. This will launch straight into profanity. You could also execute the same command from your Windows command prompt, Debian run profanity. You can make a desktop shortcut by right-clicking on your desktop and going to New, Shortcut. When it asks you to type the location, enter Debian Run Profanity. When it asks you for the name, you can call it whatever you want. I'll title it Launch Profanity. You can also right-click the shortcut and choose to pin to the Start menu or to the taskbar. If you want it to run automatically on startup, press Windows key plus Run to get the Run dialog. Enter Shell colon Startup. This will open your startup directory in your File Explorer. Then create a shortcut here the same way you did on the desktop for Debian Run Profanity. On Android devices, get Termux from Termux.com, which is essentially user land Linux for Android. Launch the Termux terminal and run the same command you would in Debian, apt install profanity. For the rest of this demonstration, I'll be using Debian. To make sure it's installed and check what version you have, run profanity dash dash version. Note the version, and if OTR, PGP, and OMEMO are supported. They're not required, but are used for end-to-end -end encryption if you want extra private messaging. If you want to see the full path, run WIT Profanity, and then to finally run it, simply run Profanity. When you first launch Profanity, you'll see this splash screen, which is the console. Starting at the very top left, you see a bar that says Type slash Help for more info. If I type slash help, you'll see it show up at the very bottom. This is the input shell. You can type in text and commands to this shell. This slash help command will be your best friend and can teach you about any feature. To get a full list of commands, run slash help commands. There are a ton of commands here. I'm not going to cover every single one in this video, but notice there's a command called quit. Let's say I want to know more about the slash quit command. I can run slash help quit, and it'll give me more details about that command. In this case, quit says it will log out of any current session and quit profanity. Tab completion is also available with the help commands, so if I type slash help q and then press tab, it'll autocomplete the command. To repeat previous commands, press the up and down arrows or control p and control n. In the top bar, on the right, it says offline so we are currently not connected to any server. At the bottom, you'll see a bar with the current time on the left side, and on the right side you'll see a number 1 with dashes on both sides. That indicates we're currently viewing window number 1, which is the console. As we connect to servers and open chat windows, we'll have even more windows. At this point, we need to connect to a server. To connect to a server, we'll need an XMPP account somewhere. You could set up your own server and give yourself an account there. That's a lot of work to set up a server though, and you don't need to do that. You can get an account from someone else who runs an XMPP server. Think of it like email. You can run your own email server, or you could get an email account with someone like Gmail or Yahoo. XMPP is the same way. There are some providers out there who will let you sign up and have a chat account for free. I run an XMPP server, and one of the perks of being a Dev Dungeon member is your own account with your username at devdungeon.com. You also get an email account, web space, and shell access to our mainframe. If you want to join and become a member, go to my.devdungeon.com. You can pause this video, go register, and then follow along with the rest of the video by logging into your personal Dev Dungeon account. That's https colon slash slash my.devdungeon.com. Connect to a server with the slash connect command. If you run slash help connect, you'll get more info on how to use it. The simplest form is simply slash connect followed by your username at your server. If I run this, 
with slash connect nobody at devdungeon.com and press enter. It'll ask me for my password and then I'll be connected. Excellent. If your server is using a self-signed SSL certificate, you might get a generic login failed message. You can tell Profanity to trust the certificate in your connect command. For example, slash connect nobody at devdungeon.com TLS trust. This tells Profanity to trust the cert, even if it's self-signed or you don't have the CA. Once you've connected, you'll see some messages in the console telling you the connection was successful and what your current status is or presence. In my case, it's simply a status of online. If we look in the top bar on the right side, you'll see it changed from saying offline to online. And it also says TLS, indicating that we're connected to the server with encryption. Down at the bottom, near the clock, we see the username that we're currently connected as. Also note, next to your status when you logged in, it tells you your resource priority. If you don't know what that is in XMPP, we'll talk more about that later. If you want to leave profanity running in the background, consider using a terminal multiplexer like GNU Screen or Tmux. You should also use a terminal multiplexer if you want to connect multiple accounts at once. Let's look at joining a chat room. To get a list of rooms, execute slash rooms down in the shell. You'll see in the console a line saying room list request sent and then room list response. In this case, there's one room named general at conference.devdungeon.com. This is a public chat room that anyone can join. So you don't need a devdungeon.com account to join. You can join from any account on any server. Note though, when I run just slash rooms by itself, it's checking for chat rooms on the server I'm currently connected to. If you're logged into a different server, slash rooms will show you different results. Because the Dev Dungeon chat room is public though, you can still find it if you're on another server, but you need to run the slash rooms command slightly differently. Slash rooms service conference.devdungeon.com. This tells Profanity to look up the chat rooms on the Dev Dungeon server. Conference is a common subdomain used for chat rooms, but each server can be different. So now that we've found the chat room and we know its name, we can join it with slash join general at conference.devdungeon.com. To send a message in the chat room, just type down in the bottom and press enter. If you want to address someone in your chat, tagging them, start typing their username and press tab to autocomplete their name with a colon and a space. So I can type nano tab and then I can type my message. Note, this is not a direct message or a private message. It's still going into the chat. This is simply how you tag someone, how you can clarify who your message is to, and it might ping them on their client. If you want to automatically join a chat room when you log in, use the slash bookmark command. The easiest way to do this is to make sure you're already in the chat room window and then just run slash bookmark. This will set the chat room to be persistent and auto join when you log in. The bookmarks are stored server side as long as your server supports it, otherwise Profanity does support the client side bookmarks. Down in the bottom right, you'll notice there are multiple windows now. Since we're looking at the chat room window, we aren't looking at our console anymore. The console was window 1, and if I want to get to window 1, I can press F1. To get back to the chat room, press the F key corresponding to the window number. You can run the command slash wins to get a list of active windows and their numbers. Press the F key for the appropriate window. Instead of using the F key, you can also press Alt plus the window number, Alt 1 and Alt 2, for example. You can also hold down Alt and press the left and right arrows to move through the windows. If you want to close a window, run slash close. If we close the chat room window, we will exit the chat room. You can use the up arrow to bring up old commands. For example, if I want to rejoin the chat room, I'll just press up until the join command is back and press enter. Now let me show you how you can add me or anyone as a contact. Feel free to add me so we can chat. Let me use F1 or Alt1 to jump back to the console. To manage contacts, you use the slash roster command. If you run slash help roster, you'll see some of the commands available. Notice the command add. It requires the JID, which is your user ID, and optionally a nickname for the user. So down in the shell, you could run slash roster add nanodano at devdungeon.com. You could run it just like that, or you could add a nickname. I'll just name it nanodano. 
you'll see a message in your console that says roster item added. Then in the top right, you'll see Nano Dano under the offline group. At this point, you've added a contact to your roster, but you're not yet subscribing to their status or presence. So you won't know if they're online, away, or offline until you subscribe to the status. You use the slash sub command to manage subscriptions. Execute slash help sub to see the options. The help for this command is so long it doesn't fit on one screen. You can use the page up key to scroll back through the history until you get to the beginning of the help command. We can see that there is a slash sub request command, and we just pass it the user ID. So I'll run slash sub request nanodano at devdungeon.com. Once the request is approved, you'll start getting status updates. I'll approve it now from my other account, and now it shows nanodano as online. Even if the user is offline, you can still send them messages as long as their server supports offline messaging. Note that you don't have to have a devdungeon.com account to chat with me. You can use an XMPP account from any server, and there are free providers out there. That's a cool thing about XMPP. It's federated like email is. So the same way you can email me at nanodano at devdungeon.com, even if you have a gmail.com address or a Yahoo address, you can contact me using XMPP at nanodano at devdungeon.com, even if you're using a different XMPP domain. But if you do want your own account with your username at devdungeon.com, join and become a member at my.devdungeon.com. From my NanoDano account, I'll also send a request back to my test account, nobody at devdungeon.com. Then you'll see in the console a message saying, received authorization request from NanoDano. To authorize this request and allow your status updates to go out to that person, execute slash sub allow and their username, in this case, nanodano at devdungeon.com. This is the equivalent of accepting the friend request. Now they will be able to see your status. To send a message to someone, type slash msg followed by the username and then the message. So I can do slash msg nanodano at devdungeon.com, hello. This creates a new window for this chat. I'll respond back from my nanodano account. If you see a username with the slash followed by a string, that string after the slash represents the client the user is chatting with. It's possible for a user to be logged into many clients on many devices at a time. When you're done, run slash close to close the chat window. If a user messages you, you'll get this message in your console that tells you there's a new chat message, who it's from, and what window it's in. Let's look at how to set your presence to away, do not disturb, or online. To list info about your current presence, run slash account. Here you can see your current presence and your default presence to use when logging in. In my case, simply online. You'll also see the priority for different presences. Later we'll talk more about priority. If you run slash help commands, you'll see there's a command called slash status. Let's check out that one with slash help status. It tells us we can use it to set our status or get the status of someone else. At the bottom, it has a couple examples too, like status set online. Let me try running slash status set away and then set it back with slash status set online. You can also add some custom text to go with your status. For example, slash status set away, be back in a few. Be sure to wrap your text in quotes. Note that if you, it uses the read line utility to get input, so it has all the same key binding options that the bash shell does. For example, control P to pull up the previous command, and control W to delete one word off the end, or control U to clear the whole line. It also supports tab completion all over the place. For example, if I enter slash status S and then press tab, it'll complete it to set. If I press tab again, it'll auto complete with away, if I keep pressing, it'll cycle through all of the available options. So you can just type slash status set and then keep pressing tab until you find the status you want. It starts with away, which is generally used for short periods of being away, then chat, which means chatty and you're open to talk. DND means do not disturb and you're busy. Last, don't use this one. Online is your basic online and available. XA stands for extended away for when you'll be away for a long period. To set your default presence for login, use the account command. 
run slash help account to see the full options. The output is long, so use the page up button to scroll through the output and find the option for setting the status. Here it is, set account, status, status. So if I want my default status when I log in to be chatty, I'll run slash account set nobody at devdungeon.com status chat. As a quick aside, it also supports VI key bindings because it uses readline. So you can set this by exiting profanity and editing your .input RC file in your home directory. Add a line that says set editing dash mode VI, then relaunch profanity. Note, you'll start in insert mode, but you can press escape and then use the Vim key bindings like H and L to move forward and backward. And then K and J are used to move up and down in the history commands. Only use this mode if you already prefer VI key bindings though. All right, so at this point, we've covered all of the important basics. You could stop here if you wanted and you'll know enough to do some basic chatting. However, if you wanna keep watching, I'm gonna show you even more about using and customizing profanity. If you're following along, I hope you add me as a contact, say hello, and join the Dev Dungeon chat room. Again, if you want your own account with your username at devdungeon.com, become a member at my.devdungeon.com. If you want to change your color scheme, you can run slash theme list to see the available themes. Run slash theme load followed by the theme name you want to load. For example, slash theme load groove box. This is one I really like that has a monokai type feel. To make your own theme, I recommend starting with a template. The developers provided a theme template in the source code at github.com slash profanity dash im slash profanity. If you visit this repo on GitHub, there's a file in the root called theme underscore template. The themes packaged with profanity are also available here if you look in the themes directory. For example, here's a theme called hacker. If I open it, you'll see how it assigns colors to various parts of the interface. To see what colors are available, run the command slash theme colors with a U. Note if you have a terminal that supports 256 colors, you can follow this link here on GitHub to see more colors. To see the list of available interface objects to color, visit profanity.im slash themes.html. You can put your custom theme files in your home directory under .config slash profanity slash themes. I'll make my file home.config profanity themes dev dungeon. There's no file extension. I've already created a custom theme with the colors that I like. My theme file is available for download in the Dev Dungeon Wiki. There's a link in the video description. I'll copy and paste this content into my theme file and save it. Now if I run profanity and then execute slash theme list, I'll see Dev Dungeon listed. If I load the theme with slash theme load Dev Dungeon, I'll see my custom colors loaded. Now let's look at how to store preferences like the default theme you want to use and your account information. To do this, you want to set up your profrc file. The profrc file goes in your home directory under .config slash profanity slash profrc. The developers provided an example profrc in the root directory of the source code at github.com slash profanity dash im slash profanity. I'll copy the whole thing as a starting place and edit it from here. The most important thing you want to set is under the connection section, the account name. This is the account name you'll automatically log in with, so I'll set nobody at devdungeon.com. Look around to see if there's anything else you want to set. In the UI section, I want to set the theme value to Dev Dungeon. If you look further down, notice there's a section for aliases. Here, you can create your own shortcut commands for things you do frequently. I'm going to create two aliases for myself, one for changing my status to away and one for online. I'll make an alias named AFK and map that to slash status set away and the other alias for unAFK and that'll be for slash status set online. Below that there's a section for OTR encryption. These are the defaults anyway so you can leave those be. We'll talk more about OTR in a minute. Further down, there's a section that will automatically set us away if we're idle, and that's convenient, so I'm going to leave that. After saving the profrc file and launching profanity again, my theme is set the way I want it, and it's already attempting to log in. I just need to enter my password. 
and I can confirm my slash AFK and slash un AFK aliases are working. If you log into your account on multiple devices, say your desktop, your laptop, tablet, and phone, and you switch between the devices a lot, you may notice that you only have part of the conversation on each client. To help resolve this, you can turn on message carbons. You know how you can someone when you send an email? Think of this like telling XMPP to CC everything to this client, regardless of whether it was intended for this client or not. This means when you turn on carbons with slash carbons on, you'll also get a copy of messages that are sent to other clients. If you only ever use one client to connect, then you will find that beneficial. If you are using multiple clients, you may also notice that sometimes chats go to one client but not the other. You can control the priority of your different clients to ensure messages don't go to a client that you aren't using. Run slash account. Notice the resource name. In my case here, it's profanity.6dva. So it's something that profanity generated automatically with a few random letters at the end. This resource name is the name of your client. You can change the name of your client to something else. For example, slash account set, nobody at devdungeon.com, resource desk. I'll name mine desk since this is my desktop computer. You can call yours whatever you want, but other people will see this resource name, so don't make it anything sensitive or private. You can just give it random letters if you want. You'll need to reconnect for it to take effect. I can run slash disconnect and then slash connect nobody at devdungeon.com for my new source to take effect. If you run slash account, you'll see the resources list at the bottom. In this case, you'll see I'm actually connected to multiple clients right now. One is a Spark client, one is a Pigeon client, and one is my current Profanity client, the one I named Desk. It shows the priority for the other clients is 1, and Profanity has a priority of 0. I can run slash priority 1, and then slash account again to confirm my new priority is 1, and it matches the other clients. If I run slash priority 10, and slash account, you'll see the profanity client now has the highest priority and should take priority when deciding which client should get a message. Also notice when running slash account, the priority list, where it shows you what priority each status has. Since I set priority globally, they're all now set to 10. This priority will persist if you quit and relaunch profanity. The highest number you can set is 127. If two clients have the same priority, they'll typically both get the message. If a client has a negative priority, the server will usually hold the message until a client with a non-negative priority connects. You can set different priorities for different presences. For example, we can say if our status is away or extended away, then we want our priority to be negative one so it doesn't receive messages. And if we are online or chatty, our priority is 10. The actual numbers aren't too important, as long as you configure your clients the same way. You can do this with slash account set nobody at devdungeon.com away negative one. And then I'll repeat this command for the XA extended away status, set that to negative one. Then I'll repeat the command for the online status and give that a value of 10. And repeat that for the chat status and give that 10. Then, when I'm done, if I run slash account, I can see that each of my different presences will have different priority. When I launch Profanity currently, it will attempt to log in automatically because I configured the account in my profrc file, but it's still asking me for my password. If you don't want it to prompt you for a password, you have two options. You can store it in plain text or encrypted. To store your password in plain text, run slash account set nobody at devdungeon.com password followed by your password. Note, you really never want to store your password in plain text, so you really should not use that method ever, and follow this other method I'm going to show you. Exit Profanity and get to the system shell because we need to install a couple additional programs, pass and gpg. Install them with sudo apt install pass gpg. In Mac, that would be brew install pass gpg. GPG is used to do the encryption, and the pass program will fetch it from the key store and do the decryption. We'll also use GPG later when doing end-to-end -end encryption. So setting it up now will not only allow us to store our password securely, but it will allow us to encrypt our conversations. 
GPG is a powerful program with many options, and if you aren't familiar with it at all, I recommend reading my written tutorial on GPG at devdungeon.com slash content slash GPG dash tutorial. In order to use GPG, we'll need our own private key. If you've used GPG before and you have a private key already, you can import it with gpg dash dash import my private key dot gpg or whatever your file is named. If you don't have a private key, you can generate one. First, list keys you currently have with gpg dash dash list keys. I don't have any yet, so this list is empty. You will end up having a combination of your private keys as well as other people's public keys here later. Generate your own private key with gpg dash dash quick generate key, followed by the user ID, which is generally your address, nobody at devdungeon.com in this case. I'll give mine the user ID of nobody at devdungeon.com because this is the test account I'm using for demonstration purposes. You can skip or provide the passphrase, but I do recommend adding a passphrase. So now we have a GBG key ready to do some encryption. Let's get the password store set up now. In the terminal, run pass init, followed by the user ID of your GPG key. So in my case, pass init nobody at devdungeon.com. Then you can add a password to the database with pass insert followed by the name of your password. This name is not so important. I'll call mine xmpp slash nobody. xmpp is like a folder and nobody is the password name. So my pass insert xmpp slash nobody. Then it'll ask me for the password. I'll type it out and it will encrypt it and store it for me. To fetch the password, you would type pass xmpp slash nobody. Here, it's printing out my password to the terminal. I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes, but ultimately we'll tell Profanity to use this command to get our password. So if I go back into Profanity, I can tell it to use that pass command by running slash account set nobody at devdungeon.com eval underscore password followed by the command pass xmpp slash nobody. Be sure to wrap your whole pass command in quotes. Now if I quit Profanity and relaunch it, it will automatically log in without prompting for a password. Note that if you did add a passphrase to your private key, you will need to enter that the first time. Okay, now let's talk about end-to-end -end encryption in messaging. Normally, when I connect to my XMPP server, I'm connecting using TLS encryption. This encrypts my communication to the server, but that's as far as it may go. The other person I'm chatting with might be connected to their server without any encryption. And even if your messages are encrypted by the servers, the server administrators could still view your communication. This is where end-to-end -end encryption comes in, encrypting data all the way from one client to the other, so nobody in between or along the way can read it, even if you're using an unencrypted server connection. End-to-end -end encryption can also help you ensure the person you're communicating with is the right person you expect it to be. There are three types of end-to-end -end encryption supported in profanity. OTR, PGP, and OMEMO. As I demonstrate each of these three methods, I'll explain the similarities and differences. Most XMPP clients only support one type of encryption, if any. Rarely you'll see a client that supports two methods. Profanity is quite distinct in supporting all three methods of end-to-end -end encryption. This gives you the most flexibility. Let's start with OTR, which stands for off the record. Run slash help OTR to get a list of available commands. I see OTR start. Let's try that with slash OTR start nanodano at devdungeon.com. Wait, it's not encrypted. I can tell this because up in the top bar on the left, where it shows us the person's name we're talking to, their status, and it says unencrypted here. That's referring to our end-to-end -end encryption. This is different from our server connection over on the right side that says TLS. So we are connected to the server with TLS, but our conversation is not encrypted end to end. But why not? We just said OTR start, right? Well, why didn't it work? That's because we don't have a private key generated yet. It's unfortunate that profanity does not warn you or stop you if you don't have generated a key. So you'll have to pay attention to that encryption warning in the top bar. Go back to the console with F1 or Alt1 and run slash help OTR again. Notice there's a command for OTR gen. That's the one we want. So I'll run slash OTR gen and it will tell me private key generation complete. Note, we only need to do this one time ever. Now, if I repeat my previous command slash OTR start 
nanodano at devdungeon.com, you'll notice a message saying OTR session started untrusted. And in the top bar, the conversation is now marked with OTR and untrusted. So we are encrypted now. And if I say hello, my message has a tilde next to it. And this tilde, unlike the previous messages that just has a dash, this indicates the message was encrypted. You could use it just like this, knowing your messages will be encrypted, but it's untrusted, meaning we have not verified who the other person is. So even though the messages are encrypted, it could be anybody. We want to be sure it's our friend or whoever we expect it to be. You can run slash OTR their FP and view their fingerprint of the person you're chatting with. You can think of this like their public key. This is their identity to you. Someone might have multiple fingerprints. To verify a fingerprint and trust it, you need to confirm the person is who you expect. You do this in OTR with a question. Run slash OTR question and then your question. Ask them something that only you and them would know. For example, what was the secret nickname of our old teacher? And my answer will be stinky. Note the answers are case sensitive. Also be sure to wrap your question and answer in quotation marks if there's any spaces. When you send this question, you need to wait for the person to respond. If they answer the question correctly, you'll see the message for OTR session trusted. And in the top bar, the conversation should be marked OTR and trusted. Now that the user's fingerprint is trusted. Another way to verify someone is with a shared secret. Let's say you both met previously and agreed your shared secret phrase is white chocolate. You can then ask them for secret with slash OTR secret and then the answer white chocolate and wait for them to respond. One big difference between the OTR question method and the OTR secret method is that when you ask a question it only verifies it on one side. The other person will also need to ask their own question before verifying and trusting too. With the shared secret method, it becomes trusted on both sides with that one action. You can repeat these verification methods as many times as you want. For example, you can ask them several questions to see if they answer all of them. To manually set trust, run slash OTR trust or slash OTR untrust. Once you have verified someone, you could store their fingerprint somewhere yourself. For example, write it down on a piece of paper. Then later, if you use a different client to start an OTR chat, you can inspect their fingerprint with slash OTR their FP and see if it matches the fingerprint that you previously verified. This way, you don't have to ask them the questions again, and you can manually mark them as trusted with slash OTR trust. OTR keys and fingerprints are stored in your home directory. If I quit profanity and go into my home directory to dot local slash share slash profanity, you'll see the OTR directory. Back up your keys and fingerprints here or delete the whole OTR directory if you want to clear everything out. If someone else is sending you a question to verify, you'll see a message saying they want to authenticate your identity and the question. To respond and provide your answer, enter slash OTR answer followed by your answer. Remember, it's case sensitive and wrap it in quotation marks. If you want to end your encrypted session, execute slash OTR end, and you'll see a message saying OTR session ended. And in the bar in the top, it'll then say unencrypted. You can also run slash OTR start from within a conversation. Note that since I verified the fingerprint in a previous OTR conversation, it remembers this is a trusted fingerprint. So you only need to set the fingerprint to trusted once. And then it's as easy as slash OTR start slash OTR end. If someone uses a different client, they may have a different fingerprint. So it's not that unusual, but you'll want to verify that fingerprint as well. If you want to change the character used to designate encryption to something other than the tilde, do that with slash OTR care, followed by the character you want. For example, the percent sign. This will only change OTR encrypted messages. PGP and OMEMO encrypted messages will have their own character. All messages that are encrypted will have that new character now. You can force or attempt to force OTR in all conversations with slash OTR policy. Use tab completion to cycle through the options. There's manual, opportunistic, and always. 
You can also set this for a specific contact by adding their name at the end. For example, slash OTR policy always nanodano at devdungeon.com to require OTR with nanodano only. Note that the person you're chatting with will also need OTR support, otherwise they'll just see unreadable text. OMemo is the only method of end-to-end -end encryption that is XMPP specific, and it takes into consideration that users can be connected from several different clients at the same time. OMemo is similar to OTR, but it doesn't have a built-in mechanism for verifying the other user. That is, there's no shared secret or way to ask them a secret question. It assumes you verify their fingerprint via some other mechanism over another trusted form of communication, like phone or in person. Similar to OTR, we'll need to generate a key first. Run slash OMemo gen. We only need to do this one time. The developers recommend setting carbon messages on with slash carbons on. We talked about this earlier. Carbons help ensure copies of messages sent to other clients are also sent here too. To start an encrypted conversation with NanoDano, run slash omemo start nanodano at devdungeon.com. Confirm in the top bar the conversation is tagged with omemo. This means it's encrypted. Run slash omemo fingerprint in a chat window to see the partner's fingerprint. To trust their fingerprint, run slash omemo trust and enter their fingerprint. To see your own OMEMO fingerprints, go to your console window with F1 or Alt1, and then run the same command, slash OMEMO fingerprint. If you already have multiple devices, you may see other fingerprints already. These fingerprints for your own account are your different clients. Let me show you how this works if you're logged in to multiple clients. I'll keep this profanity client open, and I'll also open a web browser client with Converse.js and log into the same account, nobody at devdungeon.com. So both of these clients are the same account. Let's pretend one was my desktop and the other was my laptop. Now, if I go to my profanity client and I open a message with someone like NanoDano and start an OMemo encrypted conversation and then send something, my Converse.js client will see that I sent a message but it will say it's encrypted and I can't read it. This is because I need to trust my Converse fingerprint in my profanity client. In Converse.js, I'll click the lock icon to start the OMemo encryption on this client. This is the equivalent of typing slash OMemo start in profanity. I'll also send a message from my Converse.js client and then check my chat window in profanity. Now, if I go back to Profanity's console and run slash omemo fingerprint, I'll see a new fingerprint here. It starts with 77. That's the Converse JS client. Profanity picked up that omemo fingerprint automatically. I can go to my Converse JS client and click on my user icon, and then go to the omemo tab and confirm this is the right fingerprint. Also note that in Converse, I see the fingerprint for my Profanity client as well. So back in Profanity, I have the Converse fingerprint, but I need to trust it. If I run slash omemo trust my account, nobody at devdungeon.com and paste in that fingerprint from the Converse client, it will now say trusted at the end. I have now trusted my other device's omemo fingerprint. Now, if I send a message to NanoDano in my Profanity client, I can go back to my Converse client, and now I am able to see the message that I sent from Profanity. My devices are now both encrypted and trusting each other, so everything can be in sync. The same way you can set your encryption policy with OTR, you can set it with OMemo. Try slash OMemo, policy, and then tab through the options, automatic, manual, and always. I'll keep it as manual. You can also set the encryption character with slash omemo care, and I'll use O. Now any omemo messages that are sent and encrypted with omemo have an O next to it. You can also set the log policy with slash omemo log on, off, or redact. Omemo keys and fingerprints are stored in your home directory under dot local slash share slash profanity in a directory named omemo. 
you can back up this directory or delete it completely to start fresh. So we covered OTR and OMEMO already. PGP is the last form of end-to-end -end encryption. PGP is not XMPP specific and is often used in other forms like email and for signing code. Earlier, we installed GPG and generated our private key when we were setting up our secure password storage. But if you need to install it, run sudo apt install gpg, or on Mac, that would be brew install gpg. gpg is an implementation of pgp. Run gpg dash dash list keys to see if you already have a key. I do, since we created one earlier. If you need to import an existing key, do that with gpg dash dash import and your key file name, maybe myprivatekey.gpg. But if you need to generate one, execute gpg dash dash quick generate key with your ID. In my example, nobody at devdungeon.com. Great, so now you should have a private key. This is one critical component. To export your private key for backup or to move it to another machine, run gpg dash dash export secret key dash dash armor and your key ID. I'll paste mine. And then I'll redirect the output to my private key.gpg. The armor flag will tell GPG to output a text file instead of a binary one, which is just easier to work with and transfer. Keep this key private and never share it with anybody. It's your secret key. Only export your private key if you want to back it up somewhere safely or copy it to another machine. To export your public key to share with other people, run GPG dash dash export dash dash armor and then your key ID and then redirect that output to my public key dot GPG. Share this public key with other people. Other people will need your public key to send or receive messages with you. Note, if you're using profanity and you've properly set up your keys, which we're about to do, your public key will be broadcast with your presence updates. So people who have PGP enabled clients will automatically get your public key, so they won't need to manually import it. However, there are times when you want to send someone your public key manually, so I'll cover that. So now we have our private key and our public key. I've got mine set up for my nobody at devdungeon.com account. If I go into the profanity console and run slash PGP keys, I'll see there's one for nobody at devdungeon.com, that's me, and it says type public private, meaning I have both the public and the private keys. You should only see the private keys for your own keys. Other people's keys will only be public. Before you can actually use the PGP encryption though, you'll need the public key of your chat partner. You can run slash PGP contacts to see what contacts of yours have keys associated with them. I don't have anyone else's public key, so I need to get one. If you want to message me at nanodano at devdungeon.com, you'll need my public key, and there's a couple ways you can get it. One option is automatic, and one is manual. A proper XMPP client that supports PGP encryption will broadcast your public key by signing your presence updates. So if you've added a contact, and they have allowed you to see their presence updates, you may already be getting their public key. Profanity will store people's public keys that it sees in their presence updates. Also, Profanity will properly broadcast your own public key with your status updates. This reduces the need to manually share your public key. If you want to manually set up someone's public key though, you'll first need to get it. They may send it to you over some other trusted form of communication or physically give you a copy, for my public key that I use for NanoDano, you can get it from my website. You can download the file directly using curl. You may need to install curl quickly with sudo apt install curl, but then run curl dash capital O HTTPS colon slash slash www.devdungeon.com slash nanodano.gpg. And then import this into your keyring with gpg dash dash import nanodano.gpg. Now if I run gpg dash dash list keys, I have one for myself and then one for NanoDano. You can also visit devdungeon.com slash gpg to get my latest key too. You can download the file directly or a copy is available right on the web page in plain text if you want to copy and paste that into a text editor and save it. In the profanity console, if I run slash pgp keys now, I'll see I have a private key for nobody at devdungeon.com and a public key for nanodano. Also note the IDs of the keys. These hexadecimal strings are the key IDs. We're almost done with all of the one-time configuration. 
The next step is to tell Profanity which private key you want to associate with your current account. Do this with slash account set, nobody at devdungeon.com, PGP key ID, followed by the key ID. In my case, I'll paste the ID for my private key. Before communicating with someone else using PGP, you need their public key associated to their account too. You can assign this manually if you want. I'll associate NanoDano's public key with the NanoDano XMPP account with slash PGP set key NanoDano at devdungeon.com followed by the ID of the key that I have for NanoDano A64E83A18669959E. Again, you may not need to do this step if you are subscribed to the person's presence updates and your clients are all configured properly, but it's good to know how to do this manually if you need to. Note that with PGP, there's no protocol for verifying someone's key the way OTR does. There's no way to ask a secret question or verify the other person with a shared secret. With PGP, you'd have to verify the recipient some other way manually. In this case, I trust that the public key I downloaded from devdungeon.com belongs to NanoDano since I did not get it from a random person, and I trust that NanoDano owns and has proper control of devdungeon.com. Now if I run slash PGP contacts, I'll see the XMPP account for NanoDano and the public key are properly associated with each other. Excellent. Now all of that setup we did is done, and we only needed to do all that one time. Now you're able to start and end PGP encrypted chats. Starting an encrypted chat is very similar to OTR or OMEMO, run slash PGP start, like PGP start nanodano at devdungeon.com, and note up in the top bar it says PGP send. This means I am currently ready to send PGP encrypted messages. I'll send a message or two. Note the tilde sign next to the messages, indicating that they were encrypted. The other person must have PGP properly configured on their end for them to be able to read the messages. Otherwise, it's possible you're sending encrypted messages that they can't read themselves. If I send a message back from my NanoDano account, you'll notice that the message only has a dash next to it, meaning it's not encrypted. So currently, encryption is only going one way. I'm sending encrypted messages, but my partner is not sending encrypted. It's up to each person to turn on PGP encryption on their end. If I turn PGP encryption on from the NanoDano account, and then send another message, I'll see in the top bar of profanity that it now says PGP send slash receive, meaning the conversation is encrypted in both directions, and the messages sent also have a tilde showing that they were encrypted too. You can change the symbol for PGP encrypted messages with slash PGP care, followed by the letter you want. I'll choose P. Now, the next messages sent with PGP encryption will have a P next to them. To end your encrypted chat, just run slash PGP end. To start it again within a conversation, just run slash PGP start. If you have any problems with PGP working, make sure you're using the most up-to-date version of Profanity. I found older versions had some issues and as soon as I upgraded, PGP was working as expected. You can set your log policy for PGP with slash PGP log and then tab through the options on, off, and redact. I'll turn them on. Your PGP keys are stored in your home directory in the .gnu pg directory. Profanity also has a send file command. Run slash help send file for usage information. The send file command does not support the direct file transfer method where it sends a request and waits for the other person to accept and then directly transfers it, but it does support the HTTP file upload method. This method of sending files only works if your server supports it. It will upload the file to the server and then send the other person a link, similar to uploading to a public Dropbox link. Let me demonstrate this by sending my profanity theme file to my chat partner with slash send file home slash dot config slash profanity slash themes slash dev dungeon. Then it will upload to the server and send the URL to the recipient. There are a couple important things to note about this method of file sending. First, it does not require the recipient's client to have any special support. It only requires the server to support HTTP file uploads. The downside of this is that the URL is not really private. The URL has some random characters so someone won't just guess it, but if anybody shares that URL, they can access it, anybody can. 
They will get deleted over time, but they will exist for a while, so never share anything sensitive or private using this method. There may be times when you want to view the chat log outside of profanity. Perhaps someone sent you a link to a file, but you're only in a terminal so you couldn't open it up in a browser and you couldn't copy and paste it, so you need to pull the link from your chat logs. Logging is off by default, but you can turn it on with the slash logging command, run slash help logging. To turn it on for direct messages, run slash logging chat on. To turn it on for chat rooms, run slash logging group on. With logging on, your chat messages will be stored in a log file. You can also turn on history with slash history on. With history on, when you open a chat window with someone, it will load and show you the old chat messages from the log. So the difference between logging and history is that logging will send the chats to the log file, whereas history will actually display the log in your chat windows. History will require logging to be on to work. You can get to your chat logs from your home directory under .local slash share slash profanity slash chat logs. Then go into the directory for your user and the directory with your chat partner, and the log files are named by date. Let's look at plugins in Profanity. It supports Python plugins and C plugins. There is some documentation on the official site at profanity.im slash plugins.html. It links to a GitHub repo with a collection of plugins written in both C and Python. The samples directory contains some simple C plugins. If I open the first one, the comment at the top has detailed instructions on how to compile and install the plugin. On line 42, is where it imports prof api.h, then it defines many functions, prof init, prof on start, prof on shutdown, prof on connect. These are hooks that get called by profanity. To see what hooks are available for use, go back to the readme in the repository and scroll down to the bottom. There is a link for C hooks. In there, you can see the list of all the hooks you have available. For example, prof pre chat message send is a hook you could tie into. If you click on it, it'll give you a detailed description. Back in the readme of the repository, there's also a link for C API, and this is where Profanity exposes its internals to you. For example, the function prof cons show. If I click on that, it says show a message in the console. Okay, perfect. That's basically our print statement for the console. It takes a message, and it returns a 0 or a 1. Back in the readme of the repository, you'll find the same links for Python, one page with the API and one page with the hooks. If I open the Python API page and search for const show, you'll find the same function that was available in C is available in Python. There's also a const show themed if you want to use the active themed colors. If I search for register, I'll find a function called register command. You can define your own slash commands using this. It also includes an example of how to call the register command function, which is very helpful. For more info on making plugins, refer to profanity.im slash plugins.html. Now I'll show you how to install and use some of the available plugins. Since there are several plugins in this Profanity Plugins repo, as well as templates for creating new ones, I'm going to clone this repo into my home directory. You might need to quickly install git with sudo apt install git, and then clone it with git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash profanity dash im slash profanity dash plugins. Now I have the files locally, and if I list the stable directory within the Profanity Plugins, there's a list of plugins available. There's one called syscmd.py. If I open this one and jump down to the bottom, you'll see the prof init function being called. And at the very bottom, it registers a command called slash system. Let's install this plugin now. Launch profanity and run slash plugins install and give it the path of that plugin. In my case, home directory slash profanity dash plugins slash stable slash syscmd.py. Installing it does not turn it on though. It only makes it available. Run slash plugins by itself to list installed plugins. 
To enable this plugin, run slash plugins load syscmd.py. You only need to do this once. Next time you restart Profanity, it will remember that the plugin should be loaded. If you get an error message, you can check the Profanity log file. You can find the Profanity log file in your home directory under .local slash share slash profanity slash logs. In my case, I'm honestly not sure why it did give me that error. I don't see anything relevant in the logs, and if I relaunch Profanity and I test out the plugin with slash help system, I'll see that it looks like it's working okay. This slash system command was provided by that plugin we installed, syscmd.py. Let me try out the example usage of slash system ls. Perfect, it creates a new window and outputs the results, so it looks like it works just fine. Check out some of the other plugins that come in the repository, like say.py, which will use text-to-speech and speak the text through your speakers. You can import other Python libraries and dependencies, which makes the plugin capability very powerful. In this case, say.py makes use of eSpeak. All right, that's everything I wanted to cover with Profanity. We've looked at so much now. We looked at why to use XMPP over IRC or Discord, why to use Profanity as a client. We looked at installing, how to get an account, how to connect, and about the interface. Then we learned about chat rooms and window management, adding contacts, direct messaging, setting your presence, customizing themes, customizing your prof RC, carbon messages, resource priorities, storing passwords, end-to-end -end encryption, sending files, chat logs, and plugins. If you've made it this far, you should have a good understanding of how to use profanity to chat and customize it. I hope you add me as an XMPP contact and come join our Dev Dungeon chat room. Again, you can get your own chat account with your username at devdungeon.com by becoming a member of our virtual hackerspace at my.devdungeon.com. Or you can get a free XMPP account from a free provider and still join our chat room and add me as a contact. Before you go, check out some of my products and services. Register and join our virtual hackerspace to get your own email account at devdungeon.com, a chat account, and SSH access to our Linux mainframe, which includes personal web space, Git storage, and other member-only perks. Join at my.devdungeon.com. Take my courses, working with binary data in Python 3, and deploy Django on Linux. Visit devdungeon.com slash courses. Buy my book, Security with Go. Visit devdungeon.com slash books. If you use Discord, Kathy is a fun chatbot for your server. Visit kathy.devdungeon.com. If you have a website, sign up with Apora to get notified if your site goes down. Visit apora.net. Bookmark devdungeon.com for reference and learning. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash devdungeon. Donate directly via PayPal at devdungeon.com slash donate.